Hey friends, Irene Lyon here. Welcome to this video to this channel and this entire world of healing trauma, nervous system health, and all things neuroplasticity. A little while ago, someone asked, or not someone asked, I should say, correction, someone mentioned on my YouTube channel that it looked as though I, Irene, look younger than I did three years ago in my videos. And of course, you can go back and see for yourself. Um, and I sort of chuckled and it was uh, obviously flattering. And other than the gray hair, I would say that I do appear to look a little more youthful, a little more rosy, a little healthier. And this is not by accident. I work on my body, mind, nervous system, my organs, my connection with the environment a lot. And while I am by no means a saint, I do do a lot of things to keep myself well. So I have got a list that I'm going to read through. And I will be honest, I tried to do this video like four times and it just was too long. And so here's what I, I'm thinking of doing. I'm gonna go through this list fairly, fairly quickly. I'm gonna add links below, cause some of these things I've already done videos on. There are a few future videos I'm about to do. I've got some interviews set up with some key people that will dive deeper into some of these things. Um, and I also will maybe do a follow up to this in case you have questions. So the first thing I'm going to just mention about health and personal routine, if you will, I have really shied away doing this kind of video because I don't want to tell you this is exactly what I do and what I eat in my morning and what I do before I go to bed because A, that changes and B, you are you and I am me. And what I do changes and what you do might change and we're different, our genetics are different. Um, so you've got to create your own system for what your system needs based on the time in your life and what is more essential in the moment. For some of us, we might have to really focus just on the trauma work right now because that's what we really need to do. For others, we might know that our diet is just atrocious and we just have to clean up some basics there. Maybe for some of us, our relationships are putting into so much, putting us into so much survival stress that no amount of food and trauma work or detoxification is gonna make a difference because we're constantly in a state of stress. So everyone's different. I just wanna make that little bit of a disclaimer at the beginning. Um, and then the other thing I'm gonna mention is to be sure that you check out one of my vlogs and ebooks called The Five Stages of Neuroplastic Healing Sequencing. I talk about this video in my healing trauma series and that ebook, mainly because depending on where we're at, as I just mentioned, we might need to start at different spots. So a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today, it has nothing to do with healing trauma at the somatic, somatic level. This would fall under stage one of these neuroplastic um, healing sequencing needs, namely how we treat our bodies, what we feed it, the toxins in the environment, et cetera, et cetera. So the first thing on the list is exercise. And this is different than just physical activity. This is structured, intense, moderate to intense, cardiovascular, cardiorespiratory, where we're getting our heart and lungs going higher than just if we were walking down the street easily. So structured activity, but also um, maintaining our muscle mass and keeping strength in our muscles. So that would be considered weight training, resistance training, anything where you're adding more stimulus to the muscle, to the joint, to the bone. This was my original study was exercise science, um, biomedical science, looking at the human body and how essential intense exercise is. My dissertation is actually on my website under my credentials. You can check it out if you want resources, but you know, you just look it up. The effects of um, the loss of muscle mass for health and immune system function and mortality and morbidity, they are very much connected. And a lot of people shy away from lifting weights because it's just for bodybuilders or I'm gonna get too big. It takes a lot for those bodybuilders to get huge and bulked up. It's not just going to the gym one or twice, once or twice a week. They're, it's their lifestyle, it's what they do for a living. So don't worry about that, but just know that we need to put force and pressure and intensity through our joints and muscles to keep it strong. Now, of course, this has to be balanced with rest. 
It depends on where you are capacity wise. If you're in the midst of living with a chronic illness and healing that, then of course you need, you have to have, use your judgment. Um, you have to step into these things in a titrated matter, but it is very important. I did another video, uh, a long form video uh, Q and A and a vlog on exercise and trauma. So I will post those below. Be sure to check those out if you wanna learn more about exercise and fitness and just being more active in general. The next thing is food. So nutrition, what we eat. Again, this was my main study in university, applied human nutrition. We looked at nutrition in relationship to muscle mass in my research, specifically animal protein, red meat was what I studied. And interestingly enough, in my work, my research, the exercise was still more of a potent stimul stimulus than the nutrition, but nutrition is important. Now, I won't go into the whole macronutrients and nutrients. Everyone is different. But for me, um, the thing that has really changed in the sort of the last year or two is I've gone pretty much organic. Now, I never used to just buy into you got to eat organic and all this, but I have noticed a difference in a lot of things by trying to cut out most foods that are not that are not organic. Um, I grew up with a lot of allergies, a lot of autoimmune things, and I have noticed that my allergies are pretty much gone. And I've heard through the grapevine and through some things that I've seen that when we start to get rid of the chemicals in our body and we're not feeding ourselves with more chemicals, we become um, just less sensitive to the natural world around us. Of course, that's different from toxins in the world, and I'll talk about that in a second. So organic food is sort of my go-to. Does this, this does not mean that I don't go and have a cheeseburger um, at a pub. Um, I will still eat food at a restaurant if it is not organic, but I'm also not eating out every single day. Um, so I would say 98% of the food that we eat in our household is organic, with the exception, of course, of going out or someone bringing you a gift that is food and I don't ask them, is this organic? We just accept it, thank them and, and eat it. So um, granted, of course, it's something we want to eat. So um, food is important. Now a subset to the food thing is fat, dietary fat. Making sure that we understand what the right kinds of fats are is so, so important. Um, Right now, the main kind of oils that we cook with here in this household would be olive oil, coconut oil, and butter and ghee. That's it. I've even gotten rid of all salad dressings, any dressing that uses a seed or vegetable oil. Um, I actually want to uh, probably do a special topic lecture or an interview with someone to talk about these uh, vegetable oils and why they are so harmful on our system and cause inflammatory reactions. Again, this was my my expertise in my 20s, but I've lost um, sight of the research. So I want to get back into that. But really just cutting out those oils in your home is pretty easy if you know what to cut out. Um, so seed oils, vegetable oils, those are pretty much not in our house. And whenever I can, um, we, we just don't use them or consume them. Now, of course I will have maybe a cookie if I'm out, you know, I'm not going to limit myself and deprive myself of things that just, I do love and that have a connection. Um, but it's not something that's happening every day. Um, cause a lot of those store-bought cookies are made with bad oils. This is why making your own cookies with butter is a good thing. All right, let me go back to my list so I don't forget. Um, water. So here in Vancouver, the tap water is clean, it's treated. However, there is a lot of chlorine in it and I've been learning more and more that our water can have things like lead and arsenic and all sorts of things. Again, not my expertise. Maybe I'll find someone to talk about who's an expert in that world, but we have had recently a filter. It's called a Berkey filter. I'll post the link below. I have no connection with them. It's completely revolutionized the taste of our water. Um, I know here in Vancouver, when I fill up the bathtub, especially with cold water, it smells like a swimming pool. So that lets me know how much chlorine is in our water. Um, okay, so I've talked about exercise, food, um, sun. I'm not going to go too deep into this, but a lot of people are afraid of the sun. I love the sun. I don't sunbathe, 
but I try to get out and get natural light even when it's cloudy as much as I can. I know it's important for our sleep-wake cycles. I know it's important for um, the production of the hormone vitamin D within our body. Of course, in the summer, that's a lot easier. In the winter, not so much. Um, but sun is something that I do expose myself to. I wear no sunscreen. I was just on holidays in the sun almost every day for hours a day. I never got burnt. Um, and I attribute that to my diet and my internal body being less, less toxic. And it's possible there's a connection there. Again, not my area of expertise, but my hunch is that as we get less toxic inside and as we start to have better oil and fat in our cells, specifically our cell membrane, our skin is just more resilient and sun is natural right? Um, so again, everyone's different. Everyone's genetics are different, but I do spend as much time as I can in the sun. Um, ah, the next thing. Again, this is a product um, that I have been using kind of for the last year. Um, and some of you may have heard of a physician named Zach Bush. He does great webinars online. Again, I'll post him below, but he has a supplement. We call it liquid dirt. You'll have to look into it, but it is um, for the gut biome. It is not a prebiotic. It is not a probiotic. It's something called tetrahydrite, I believe. And it works to help stitch back up the, um, the gut, the lining of the gut, the barrier of the gut. And a lot of chronic illness and a lot of chemicals and food sources that are not the best for us, they can cause damage at the gut level. And so this product, again, something I've been using, seems to have made a difference in my health and well-being and gut health. So check that out. Um, research it yourself, but that is something else that I do use. Um, and then the next thing is going to fall under sort of additional support and the world of detox. Now, detox is kind of a strange world because we word we think of it in terms of, you know, I'm detoxing from heroin or a drug or whatever, but detoxing the body I've started to learn is really, really important. And I'm just experimenting with this in my own personal world. But since I've met many people who specialize in detoxing the body, um, my naturopathic doctor friends, uh, Chelsea and Mason, I've interviewed them before, I'll put their interview below. Those sorts of doctors and physicians, holistic um, functional medicine practitioners, they really believe in detoxing the body, whether that's cleansing the system and really eating simple foods for a while, whether it's sauna, whether it's using certain um, supplements and minerals. Again, I'm not telling you what you should do. I'm just saying that this has been something I've been working with more. And I would say that it's probably, oh, it's probably 80% of what is making my system appear a bit brighter and a bit lighter and just a bit healthier over the past year. So the main things I do, um, let me just make sure I get these all here. Um, there's really two main things. Exercise is detoxing as well because the sweat detoxifies the body, right? Eating good foods and not loading your food with crap in itself is detoxifying. But the other two things would be hydrotherapy. And I'm not gonna get into that in detail because I am gonna interview Chelsea and Mason this September on hydrotherapy specifically. So I'll leave that for another day. But these would be things like hot, cold contrast baths. So not just cold baths, and I've done, done a video on that and why we have to be careful with that, but going between the two to increase circulation within the blood, the lymph, etc. cetera. Um, sauna, I prefer dry sauna where you're sweating. I've been using saunas a lot more in the past year. Um, so that is something that I have upped in addition to, of course, sweating with exercise. The other thing I started back in September is taking a mineral called zeolite. I'll post it below. Um, this was given to me. Uh, may, I was made aware of it through a friend of mine whom I always admired for her health and vibrancy. And I think one day I was like, what do you do? Like, what do you do? You just look so good. And she is very healthy and takes care of herself and is also a healer and a practitioner. But she said, well, there's this thing I've been taking for about five years. It's called zeolite. You should try it. So I did. And I noticed a significant difference in my clarity, in my skin. Um, I feel as though 
there's been a weight lifted because here's the thing, our fat cells store toxins. And so one of the reasons we sometimes have trouble losing weight, and again, this is not my expertise, but I've heard enough to know that there are people who will try and try and try to shed some extra pounds and they just can't. And I've heard recently that if we don't work at detoxifying heavy metals, chemicals that are in our body, um, the fat will store them, they'll keep them, and it'll be really hard to lose that extra unwanted fat from our bodies. So I have not cut down my calories. I actually eat more than my husband, who is much bigger than me and heavier than me, you know, weight-wise, just because he's a bigger guy. Um, I eat way more than him, and yet my system has been shifting and shedding um, just these layers. So zeolite is something that I have really, really enjoyed using and experimenting with. Um, again, I'll post it below and next week, hopefully uh, the interview gets ready by next week, I will be interviewing Eddie Stone, who is the founder of a company called Touchstone Essentials that has produced a very specific kind of zeolite that gets into the cell and cleans out the cell. He will explain it all. I don't want to get into the, the details because it's, again, not my suite of expertise. But personally, I have seen it made a huge difference. I've had scars on my body that I've had since I, I've been eight years old disappear, not disappear, but shift and come out. I have had with this some rashes come up that are clearly a sign of something coming out of the body. Um, but as you can see, I'm not covered in rashes anymore. I, I really wasn't, but just little patches here and there under the arms, probably from when I used to use antiperspirant when I was in high school and in my early 20s. Um, all sorts of things have shifted that are really, really cool. So detoxing is a big thing that I'm looking more at now, especially when there's just chemicals in our bodies from the air we breathe, the chemicals around us, the things we put on our skin and the foods we eat. Um, the next thing, um, again, not my expertise, but it is something in my environment that has shifted and I'll link some things below, is we have in our home some devices that help with EMF, so electromagnetic frequencies. Again, I wanna get someone on my um, show on my channel to interview them about these specifically in these products, so stay tuned for that. But I am sensitive to electricity, I am sensitive to light, I am sensitive to buzzing sounds of electricity. Um, and so I have found, again, since we've had these things in our home, while you know I'm not totally devoid of stuff because we've got internet and all that, it seems to have shifted things in that way, um, and of course it helps my sleep. Um, and then the final thing, body work. Now, this is for me. I have had numerous injuries, too many to count, numerous surgeries, concussions, whiplashes. So this is what I do. Again, you may not need this, but I do see an osteopath regularly. I get massage regularly. I have a physical therapist that helps me with my knee. I recently had another knee surgery. So I have had more body work this past year to help with these injuries. But just like anything, there'll be seasons where I'm doing a bit more of something and a bit less. For instance, this winter, there's gonna be less sun, so I'm not gonna be in the sun as much. And I might up, up my hydrotherapy practice to keep my immune system healthy, those sorts of things. I might eat more foods with vitamin D, for example. Um, but body work, again, to go back to that, has been something that is just super important. I never did anything like that in my 20s and even early 30s and definitely not in my teen years when I was doing a lot of my hardcore sport and injuring myself. So I kind of feel like I'm doing catch up. Um, so I will post a video below about not body work specifically, but if you are looking to find a good somatic practitioner, I go through some of the things to consider and to ask them, especially if you want to work with someone who is trauma informed. All right. I think that's everything for now. Um, I haven't mentioned things like relationships and jobs, but I, I have good relationships. I like my job. I like what I do. So that contributes also to the health of my system. Um, so there's a lot going on here. And just know that, um, here's an analogy for you. If you think about cleaning a house, you aren't just gonna clean the toilets. 
or you're not just going to sweep the floor or you're not just going to clean the fridge over the course of a month you're going to do little bits here and there and you don't just do it for one month it's a cycle that continues to happen right when it's more muddy outside and it's winter you're going to clean the foyer a little bit more because more dirt is coming out on the shoe in the shoes that kind of thing um so if you think about your system and your body and i've just given you a whole bunch of things it might be that you need to focus on one thing but try to add in some of these other things and over time they do accumulate our system starts to shift and starts to get better and it starts to heal and regenerate and repair better um, i would say that where i'm at right now um, this is 20 plus years of learning how to take care of my body and i finally feel like i have a good grasp on what needs to be done on a weekly basis some things a daily basis some things a monthly basis to keep that regeneration going and keep my system repairing and as we regenerate and repair more and more and more and of course all the somatic trauma healing work I have done. So that is also a huge part. Um, as we do more and more of that, we kind of might start to look like we're getting younger because many of us just haven't put all these pieces together. And thankfully more and more information is coming out around all these things I've just mentioned. So I hope this has been useful. Let me know if it has, let me know if a Q&A long form where we just talk about some of these things would be beneficial. Let us know in the comments below, let my team know. Again, check out all the links I have below and be on the lookout for a couple of interviews coming up. Um, one with Eddie of Touchstone Essentials, the Zeolite guy, and one with Mason and Chelsea where we're gonna talk about hydrotherapy and I'll try to get some other experts on to talk about some of the other things. Thank you everybody for being here and we will see you next time.